Hello everyone, the stock market showed significant strength last week as most mega cap stocks ended the week with decent gains. As we enter a brand new week, I feel this could be a make or break week. In this video, I will share three key events to take note of in the upcoming week and also the key support and resistance levels for some of the major stocks to determine whether this is a make or break week. Okay, a quick recap of last week. Most of the stocks closed lower on Friday following a strong June jobs report. That said, major indices and stocks still ended the week with solid gains. Specifically, the Nasdaq even managed to string together five consecutive green days, which marks its longest winning streak since November 2021. Come this week, there are three key events to take note of. The biggest landmine and wild card in my opinion is definitely the release of June's Consumer Price Index data on 13 July. Wednesday's CPI figure could potentially move the market drastically. It can also offer us some forecasts on the next interest rate hike by the Federal Reserve. At this moment, a 75 basis point seems to be locked in, which is similar to June. Anyway, allow me to make some wild guesses here. I think if the CPI number is less than last month's 8.6%, the market could fly. And if it's between say 8.7 to 8.9, we could have mixed movements, depending on how the smart money wants to move the market. For instance, on the first day, it could move in one direction, and then the next day or a day later, in the opposite direction to trap investors. But if the CPI data hits 9%, I think a massive sell-off could be triggered and there could be a discussion on whether 100 basis point rate hike is required. Once again, these are just my wild guesses. Watch out for the technical levels to identify whether the trend is bearish or bullish. Next, the second event to look out for is the start of Q2 earnings reports with major banks such as JP Morgan and Citigroup, as well as consumer stables like Pepsi and Coca-Cola lining up to report their previous quarter's results. I believe their performance and guidance will shed some light on the economy outlook for the second half of the year, and investors will be examining the effects of commodity price and supply chain pressures on companies' profits margin. Finally, this coming week is also an option expiration week. Therefore, after Wednesday's CPI data, watch very closely how the market moves on Thursday, as usually news takes about a day to be digested. I foresee lots of premiums will get wiped out on Friday as they expire. Hence, if you have options expiring on 15 July, you may want to be a little more careful heading into the week with these multiple landmines around. Before I move on to the technical analysis portion, if you do find value in this video, I hope you can help me grow this channel by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. Okay, let's now move on to the technical analysis. First up, I would like to highlight that there were a few mega cap stocks that closed above the 50 moving average last week, namely Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon and Google. The last time it happened for 4 of the 5 stocks was in April, that's about 2.5 months ago. So what does this mean? It means the current trend is bullish, but as shared, CPI is one big landmine that could make or break the market. Therefore, let's look at some of these stocks to see what are the key levels to watch out. Firstly, I would like to start things off with VIX, which I think is relatively important as compared to the last two weeks as I am expecting more volatility this coming week. In case there are viewers who are not aware, VIX tends to move in opposite direction of the broader stock market. So, as of last Friday, VIX closed below a key support level shown by the green line and also the red downward trend line. This support level is 25. As a result, the stock market rallied nicely last week. But as we enter the new week, keep your eyes peeled on the level around 23.9. This is where the current 200 moving average sits and also where the lower Bollinger Band is. To add on, the recent low of VIX is 23.7, very close to 23.9 as well. So long story short, this is one key level that I will keep a close eye on. But what does it mean to keep a close eye on? It means I would see whether VIX bounces off this level of 23.7 to 23.9. If it does, then look out for 25 again. And if 25 breaks, then we can expect more sell-off in the market. To trigger a panic sell-off, I believe it has to go up to 28 or even 30. Conversely, if VIX closes below 23.9 or the recent low of 23.7, 
then the market is slightly flying. To be very frank, my personal view is VIX will bounce off this 23.7 or 23.9 levels. Once again, not financial advice, okay? Alright, now let's have a look at SPY. Currently, it's looking bullish with 6 straight days of green candlestick. However, I would think the 50 moving average will pose as a key resistance level at around 395. To add on, the top of the Bollinger Band currently sits around 397. Therefore, SPY has to take out these two levels before it can unlock more upside and potentially break above 400. With that said, watch out for the gap between 394 to 399. There could be a possibility that market makers bring it up to fill the gap and then bring it down again. On the downside, a mass sell-off will probably bring us to retest the recent low of 362. There is a support at around 370 but it's a weak one. And to also highlight, there wasn't much volume last week. My guess is big players are staying at the sidelines and shorts are covering their positions till the CPI data is released or when the big tech announces their earnings. On the weekly chart, it is still sitting within the downward channel that are marked by the two red lines. But it did pop out of the channel a little last week. This week will be crucial, so let's see if it can put another green candle above the downward channel after CPI data is released. Next, Apple. I have shared on Moomoo platform that 137 and 140 are key levels. And if Apple breaks above these levels, we would unlock more upside. And indeed, both levels were broken and Apple is sitting at 147 right now. So good job to you if you have traded with the uptrend. But with that being said, at 147, Apple is at the top of the Bollinger Band. The last time it touched this area was during the squeeze in March this year. What happened next was that it went for a slide down, marked by the two red lines. Not saying it will happen now, but I believe it will be rejected soon at the top of the band. Nevertheless, some key resistance levels on the upside are 148, 150 and 154. Personally, I think if Apple doesn't get rejected at the top of the Bollinger Band and 38.2 Fibonacci retracement level, which are 147 and 148 respectively, we could finally see 150 again. But if it hits down, 137 and 140 will act as a support now. Moving on to Tesla, it seems like a breakout could happen soon, based on two things. First, there is this descending triangle spotted, marked by the two yellow lines. This was spotted on Nvidia's chart previously, where I have explained that this is a bearish pattern. You can check out my previous video for more information. Second, looking at the Bollinger Band, you will realize that it is getting narrower and tighter, which means a breakout will likely ensue. Okay, but going back to the descending triangle, it does not mean that a break towards the downside is guaranteed, okay? Simply because nothing is guaranteed. So do keep a lookout for the various key levels. For instance, I have always shared that 746 is one key level to break above which Tesla did it last Friday, closing above this price level as well as the 50 moving average. But something to note, for the last one month or so, when Tesla broke above 746, it somehow got rejected and went back down again within the next day or two. Therefore, if I wish to trade Tesla, I will be a little more cautious and I would want to wait for Wednesday's CPI data to see where the market makers want to move Tesla. I mean, you have the descending triangle, the Bollinger Band squeezing, CPI data coming up, earnings coming up too, RSI indicator not showing oversold nor overbought, and the stock is currently floating around a key level. So yeah, I will be a little more careful with Tesla. On the upside, we have resistance at 800 and 823. On the downside, 746 has become a support now. In fact, one major huge support is actually the 620s range that it tested in May and June. So will we test it another time this month in July? I'm not sure, but once 620 breaks, I would think sub 600 or 500s range could come into picture quite quickly. Moving on to Meta, a quick one. There seems to be this strong resistance level that is preventing Meta from flying, and that is around 172. And guess what, it is currently sitting very near to the resistance level and some investors may consider taking profits here because frankly speaking, I am not very hopeful about Meta's earnings which is happening on 27 July. 
Any stinker by this company will likely see it fall towards the recent low of 154. And in a worst case scenario, we could see a waterfall down and hit towards the pandemic low of 130 plus. But that's the worst case scenario. On the upside, after 172, the next resistance level is around 184. And that is also where the current 50 moving average sits on. And oh, another issue about Meta is if the other online ad companies report bad earnings or poor guidance, Meta could be easily affected too. So do stay cautious if you wish to invest or trade this stock. Alright, it has been a busy weekend so I didn't manage to cover many um, mega cap stocks. But here are some of my quick end thoughts. The Nasdaq, which is heavy on tech companies, was relatively bullish last week, with many big companies showing positivity by clearing key resistance levels. But I have mentioned on Momo that sometimes the bigger the bounce, the harder the fall. I'm not saying the fall will definitely come, but I thought I should highlight that the current rally faces numerous headwinds and challenges, from inflation to earnings seasons to even key technical resistance levels. In fact, I think investors should pay special attention to earnings season. Amid high inflation, a strong US dollar, and slowing growth, expect many companies to miss or issue poor guidance. That said, in my view, CPI data could be a game changer and a prelude to a bigger move this week. More often than not, the stock market takes the stairs up and then the elevator down. This means if CPI data turns out to be really bad, the sell-off can happen very fast and the market can turn bearish overnight. And a few days of sharp sell-offs would turn the recent buys into clear losses and we may retest the recent low again. But of course, this is not guaranteed to happen. Alright, that's all for this video. If you have found some value in this video, I really hope you can hit the like and subscribe buttons. They mean a lot, a lot to me and will keep me going. Thank you very much.